Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. In this video, I'm going to give you an unprecedented look at what the bottom of a carp lake really looks like. We're going to be looking at feeding holes, features, how to target these areas, rig presentations, and how to avoid certain areas that the carp just aren't interested in feeding. So I'm down at the shallows, and we're going to have a look at how the carp have been feeding down here. This is the actual rock swim itself. A huge pile of boulders here. Got the bridge over there. And right in front of these boulders, we've got these craters. You can see that there's a channel of these craters going left to right, about two metres wide. If we have a closer look, you'll see that these little pits have been excavated and these are about the size of dinner plates. You can see the gravel that's been exposed around the edge. And uh, this is where the carp eat. This is where they like to be. Now, if we have a bit of a poke around in the mud here, it's a very, very fine layer of silt. And then right below that silt, you've got the hard gravel. If we go in one of these holes, it's actually straight down to gravel there so basically what the carp are doing they're eating through this soft stuff here and getting to uh, what they want there'll be food in there there'll be minerals in there and it's not just the carp that like it here we've got these amazing freshwater mussels that uh, do an incredible job of filtering our water for us we've got a huge population of these now and you can see very, very close to this area is a silt mound. It's only a metre or so away. And if we go and have a look at this silt mound in more detail, you'll see that there's no cratering, there's no pitting, there's no signs of feeding whatsoever. And this silt is thick and black and horrible. Unless there's some really, really good stuff there. The carp just aren't interested in that. So this is why I always target the harder areas rather than these softer areas. We've got a lovely area of cratering here as well. So they've dug through the top layer of silt and there's a tree debris that's uh, fallen here. And they've eaten all around that, exposed all this uh, organic matter. Just there. All of these rocks provide a safe haven for life and the carp go digging to eat all this natural. So we've noticed while we're filming this that there's an arc, a feeding channel and it goes round, goes round and terminates there. Left to right there's not a lot of feeding activity at all. Very very clear track and this is why location is everything in carp fishing. Now I've known about this rock for a long time. He easily stands, well, got to be nearly 500 mil above the height of the, uh, the, the lowest point there. A very common feature as you can see, silt excavated around the central feature of a rock. So if you do find a rock in open water, you can be pretty sure that there's a silt hole somewhere around it. In front of these rocks is an excellent place to drop a rig. I'm going to come out of this nice big deep silt, silt hole and I'll go into the absolute gloop. It's a good 12 inches deep this. It's soft, it's horrible and you really don't want to try and fish in that. Now this is a well-known feature this. This big rock here, huge great pool surrounding it. See there's plenty of shod that's been exposed over the years. You might even be able to see through the water there. See how clean the bottom is. There's actually not one rock, there's another rock there. So we can see some mussel tracks here. They love it. And that's a lovely area to drop a bait that. 
target that from a number of swims, but uh, this is not a feature you're gonna you're gonna cast to. The nearest swims 45 yards away over there, and you need to be dropping it on a three foot spot, and that's just not gonna happen. So I've come over to the island margin, found uh, again another lovely rock feature, another pool in front of it, and then we've got this really lovely gravel strip. The carp have exposed and it follows the margin. Probably about 80 centimetres deep, there's a line where they've polished the stones clean. So here I am underneath the enormous Point B fir tree and we've got some real firm clean areas under here. Big feature of this area is the Point B rock and right in front of the rock we've got this hole this is what the carp have done, they've just dug this out, polished it clean. Now what's interesting is that recently they've cleaned the area to the left and to the right of this rock. I've never seen this area that clean actually. So that's a really interesting development for me and uh, these things uh, are changing and evolving all the time as the carp sculpt the environment. So one of the challenges of fishing this venue accurately and well is, is, is rig positioning. Literally the bottom of that hole and the top of that rock, it's about 30 centimetres uh, uh, difference. You can imagine how bad it would be if you were a metre off and drop your rig or cast your rig behind this rock. So the only way to fish a feature like this is to come out in the boat or Bring, drive a bait boat over in waders. I'm always looking for the low point of the hole and when I drop it from the boat just going to go in there like that I'm going to sit lovely. The leader or the rig tubing is going to lie back that way and you can see how beautifully that sits. Now on this spot if I come across at 80 centimetres if you were to mistake the bottom of that hole for this depression up here, drop it up there, then go across to the swim, the line lay is going to be awful, unless you pay an awful lot of line off and get that to sink like that. It's going to be a terrible presentation. The carp are going to bump into this. All you're going to get is a load of beeps and you're not going to get a pickup. So this is why absolute precision is required when you're fishing this venue on certain spots. Now this is a feature that I didn't know existed. This has just been excavated by the fish in the last two years. In the middle we've got a rock and round the edge we've got this rim and they've just absolutely carved that out. If I step into this hole you can see what I mean. That's a good 30 centimetres deep, the bottom of that hole. It's incredibly clean. Let's have a look what they're interested in. It's this clay. They absolutely love it. If you can find clay, the carp won't be far away, I'll tell you. So I've come out to a spot on the gravel bar here. Dodgy area, this actually. We've got some huge great boulder in the middle. But this is a lovely area. I found this great little feeding area here. Again, it's absolutely vital where you drop a rig. You know, you can't just cast out here. Well, you could, uh, and and trust to luck to where you uh, where you land. But uh, things could go badly wrong if you did. So if I wanted to fish this spot, I'd have to be really, really accurate. I'm aiming for that spot there. So I'd have to find that rock and that rock from the boat with a pole and then drop the rig there, lovely, and then I'd be fishing. The tubing would be going back to point A over there and if I got the angles right it would be fine. But if I was off by 30 centimetres I missed the hole I could drop the rig there, which would be 
well it wouldn't be that bad actually but uh, I could drop it there and you can see the tubing would then have to go over the rock and this is why we always insist in on a meter of uh, meter of tubing because you can imagine what would happen if we just had main line running over that rock it would be a, a fairly short experience so this is a lovely area here it's absolutely huge uh, it's probably 10 meters by 10 meters or something like that uh, what we've got here is some lovely aerobic silt that's silt with oxygen in basically loads of life in here and there's only two three centimeters of it so presentation isn't a problem there's no rocks or anything around here that i can uh, that i can see so you know you're casting around and you get a nice little soft thud there'll be no rocks or whatever and uh, it it's a great area to cast to basically it's not precision fishing hit the clip get some kind of drop feel a thud and you're fishing so i'm just going to drop a rig in the uh, uh, in this zone here and even if i drop it with a bit of force not a problem for the uh, lead to settle like that rig goes down oh you can't really see that but uh, it the lead hasn't plugged at all the bait's just rested on the top of the silt and uh, yeah very very fishable just not an issue beautiful either rig no problem at all yeah if you're worried about the way that these uh, hook links are, are looping up like that you know they would settle over a few hours if you're really paranoid you can put some uh, some rig putty on but to be honest most of the time i don't bother that's plenty good enough in order to get a bite making making my way now out into another silt bowl smaller this bowl probably three meters diameter there's a lovely depression in the bottom of it actually yeah nice nice and firm there but you can see the problem if you're two three meters uh, past and you know that's not not too difficult to do you've only got to get a caster uh, wrong enough and there's a 400 mil height difference between the bottom of that hole and that great muddy horrible cliff up there if you were to try and uh, fish up here and you get it wrong you land the rig up there oh tubing's going to go away to your swim and again if you're fishing tight lines the fish are just going to bump into that all day long <laughs> I'm proper am in the shit <laughs> the other interesting thing to note about this area is that there's again there's very few signs of feeding activity up here you know we're looking over at those uh, harder zones there's little feeding depressions all over you know there's a feeding depression just on the edge of here and just on the edge of here and we've got this nice big bowl in front of us but it's all in the areas that are cleaner shallower harder with less muck so i've come over to the other side of the island this is the the back side of the island as we call it from the house and the first thing to notice is how clean this area is one of the reasons it's clean it's south facing and the carp absolutely love it along here this is just like a moonscape of rocks everything from a few millimeters up to up to boulders like here and uh, there's plenty of trees around me as you can see and they're, they're dropping leaf matter all the time the own you can see where the carp haven't been up up near those uh, the, the island margin tight to actually a lot of shod there but down in this zone here I'm probably well my head's just at water height now so um, yeah, about three foot of water in the bottom of this hole and another classic feature you've got a rock you've got a hole a depression and you've got a little kind of rise and a, and a drop up into it about a meter round 
just a magic place to fish, you know. One of the biggest challenges for anglers tackling this venue for the first time is hook sharpness. Now, you can imagine, you can get this absolutely on the money, you can find the rock, you row it out, you, you drop it down there, goes in amongst the rocks there, and, you know, say first time you uh, you set this uh, this little trap it doesn't work you wind in and when you wind in what's going to happen is with the best will in the world you're going to dink the hook on a rock yeah it takes so little to damage a hook now if you don't change that hook or resharpen it if you tried that set again you could be location location the timing can be right it can be absolutely perfect but if you've put it out and that hook point is slightly damaged you're basically wasting your time Beausoleil is full of incredible features like this we're underneath what we call the island point fir tree here huge great thing and it's just it's an absolute maze it really is i'm sat in front of a massive car pole um this didn't this didn't used to exist you used to be able to see a a, a bit of that sticking up but they've just absolutely battered the granny out of this spot again it's three foot diameter meter diameter or something and they've just literally dug and dug and dug through 20 25 centimeters of uh, of soil and mud and clay and grit in order to get at what they want and um, got a big height differential again from there up to the top there in a meter it's doing about 40 centimeters difference in height which is huge you can imagine left left and right we've got some nice clean areas here but you've got an absolute danger zone here you drop a rig behind these branches in there it might be fishing but the chances of you actually successfully landing anything even if you do get a pickup is very very slim just to add to the jeopardy two meters behind we've got an enormous boulder that's just at the entrance to a huge cave now this cave is something like six meters long it's one and a half meters undercut and it's about 70 centimeters tall at the at the maximum height and you can fit an awful lot of fish under there you've got roots hanging down you've got um, you know great piles of rock under there and it's a, you know the carp absolutely love it under here but uh, it's certainly one for daytime only you know if you, you try and night fish this quite frankly you're nuts I oh, found some absolutely horrible, uh, horrible stuff here. It's just, it's just soup. All of those bubbles coming up there when I put my boot in, that's the gases coming up basically. So this is your rotten egg smell that you can sometimes get off, uh, off bait or thick areas of silt. And if I just drop this uh, rig into here, even if I only just drop it from, oh, there we go. <laughs> I was only six inches off the uh, uh, off the top there. Obviously, it would have been even if you were feathering it down, it would have been slowed down, etc. But uh, you know, it's still going to be travelling through the water, and it's just absolutely disappeared. That lead is now. If I pull that out, the lead flew at least. 10 centimeters under and the bait just disappeared right down on top of it so um, awful place to fish the carp ate it and uh, just one to avoid so I've come out to the Beausoleil bridge here and you can see all of this will work metal work a few rocks etc if you're fishing near any obstacle like this you need to fish a decent margin away basically if they make it to this feature it's game over 
as a consequence of that this is an area where I'm always finding rigs during drain down I was out here the other day and uh, I found at least three rigs all of them lead clip rigs all of them whereby the swivel had popped out of the lead clip the lead was still on and I didn't actually find anything with the hook on but that's only because the main line knot had actually fouled down by the swivel what's probably happened in that scenario is that uh, a guest has hooked a big cat it's gone through the bridge and the main line knot's failed if it was a carp gone through there with a lead clip assembled in that manner where the swivels popped out and stuff then it's really so easy for the whole system to get tangled up to get snarled up you cannot possibly imagine that the uh, rig tube is going to be able to slide up that broken bit of main line without any problems whatsoever it's just it's just not going to happen unless the lake's really clean and we've got silt and shod and all sorts of rubbish and uh, there's so many things to go wrong I know some of you, you know, question the safety of, uh, of, of inline leads, but the one thing I can guarantee is if I find an inline lead, all I find is the lead and the tubing. Nothing else, no line, no hook, no rig. It's just the lead and the tubing because it's failed safe. All rigs need to fail safe and they need to fail real quick. Lead pops off tubing through and he's off and done my mono rig's even safer that lead's off he's away in this instance you've got a huge great hole there lead claw lead claws flying through there and he's off and he's done really really safe so both lays a classic estate lake type venue and if you're fishing a similar venue you're going to find similar features i'm sure the key takeaways are lakes aren't flat there's some really lovely areas to fish and there's some really nasty areas to fish as well always target the hard areas because that's where the carp are feeding that's where they're cleaning and that's the where they want to be i hope you found that interesting if you've got any questions as always do leave a comment i do try and respond to them all